Alright guys, have to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And ahead of the final week of Major 3 qualifiers, Los Angeles Thieves have decided to make an addition to their roster. No changes though to the player dynamics as of yet. They've brought a new coach into the fray. Is this going to turn this team around or will they need further wholesale changes as time progresses? Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much to PrizePix for supporting today's content. The best daily fancy product you're going to find on the market right now. This is how it works if you guys are unfamiliar. Effectively, it's an over-under type system, but the greatest thing is you can compare Call of Duty or you can pair Call of Duty with any other esports and sports that you guys can see at the top of the screen. So let's say Sib tonight for Seattle, he's very good at Bacage. They might play that game one against Florida, it's a reasonable situation. That means you're probably going to go over this number if that is the case. A BT versus, I mean, of course, you've got all the other players on the left-hand side here with the numbers they're kind of expected to get. But I was thinking a BT versus Minnesota, 58.5, might be a touch higher. I feel like Minnesota Rocker are going to give them a relatively hard time. Of course, we'll talk about the matches here in a second. But um, yeah, I could, of course, pair this with other sports, NBA, don't really know what's going on over there. So let's just do F1, right? This weekend is in the Monaco Grand Prix. It's Charles Leclerc's home race. He's never finished a race at Monaco. He's had rather hard luck. But this time, maybe he's going to get pole. Let's go for it. And I would be able to place his entry if I was from the US and Canada. If you guys are, feel free to get involved. Crimson seems to think that Leclerc has a decent chance. And Price Picks will match any deposit up to $100 when you sign up with the link in the description box below. Thanks to Price Picks. Let's crack on with the content. And speaking of Crimson, he shouts out the Tacrum Academy right here. Of course, a Hydra and Crimson. They're going to have to have a pretty good time this weekend. They play only one game. They're currently two and two. They should be okay to get to the winners bracket for the major. But yeah, world championship qualification right now is certainly up in the air. They're going to need a good couple of majors in a row if they want to get enough points on the board. They play optic this weekend as well. That is going to be far from easy. But every single ten points they can possibly put up is certainly going to work in their favour. Optic, of course, play two games this weekend. As I say, we'll look at the matches here in a few minutes' time. We're focusing especially on the ones going on later on today. Just speaking real quick of optic, though, actually, because of course, as we looked at yesterday. Prolude effectively on that team now full time as a substitute for, well, the foreseeable future, right? Probably until the end of the season, right? And the next season, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows also when Illy might well return because we haven't really heard any updates at all over these last several days. I'm sure we'll get them maybe over this weekend. Who knows? Especially we'll have to going into the major, the situation they're going to have because right now, as every day passes, it seems more and more likely that Prolude will be in their team come major three. Now, Shotzi has actually been playing around with the Tommy gun. So the M1928 is a weapon that we'll see back in World War II and at some players have started to pull it out, the likes of Cami. We've seen John use it a little bit, and apparently it could potentially be viable. Like, um, this is what Shots is using if you guys want to check it out, because I do wonder whether we'll see him pull anything like this out this coming weekend. Of course, they're sitting at, well, sitting pretty right now in terms of CDL points and in terms of qualification for the major, but they played the Subliners and they played the Los Angeles Thieves this weekend, and of course, Thieves are now going to have a slightly different setup going on there behind the scenes, as we shall see here in a second. But yeah, maybe Shots is going to give this one a go. Would be kind of interesting to see, right? Envoy back in, uh, what, the Huntsman days in Modern Warfare, he pulled out the Uzi, was one of the first to introduce that to the meta, and maybe this weapon is viable in the hands of the right player, and then, well, maybe Shotzi is just that guy. This also on the roster front, shout out Fig Boy right here, your boy appearing here at the top, but for some reason, this is the thumbnail for week three, day three, which I guess is in the, the well, on this Sunday, I suppose, and the thumbnail actually has Yeez on the thumbnail hole from Florida, uh, well, with Nero on the right-hand side, which is kind of interesting, because I haven't really seen, I'm not sure we've seen another thumbnail this year, really, that's had a substitute on the team or on the thumbnail, when they're not actually in the starting team. Doesn't really make sense. It might have been to have a, well, a substitute player on the thumbnail, but they've decided to do it here, the CDL, for some reason, which some people said, okay, wow, is this kind of interesting because possibly Florida said to the league, okay, yeah, we're going to bring in Yeez. And therefore, they put him on the thumbnail. But then again, they wouldn't really have to tell the CDL that, I'd imagine, at least this early on, because like maybe they would do it if they were bringing an entirely new player on that to sign a new player. But um, in theory, they could bring in Yeez whenever they wanted to, right? For the match or even mid match if they wanted to. So I'm kind of surprised the CDL did this, and especially because Sky says here that, um, yeah, he's not playing this weekend, right? So yes, he's not coming in and um, that's not a factor at all. I do wonder if they're like, I, I was actually thinking at some point this season they might bring Yeez into the team because he is like, a, well, more of an SMG player than um, kind of the AR dominance that Florida currently have. But obviously it's kind of working for them. They're never going to win an event with this team. Like, um, yeah, I might eat my hat for that one, but I kind of doubt it. But like, yeah, they can still be competitive. They can still be good teams. They beat Optic back at Major 2, which I think is what they've got in their bio right now because it's pretty much the greatest achievement of the last several years. Excluding the Modern Warfare homestands, of course. But let's talk about 
the Los Angeles Thieves situation, adding some new strats to the playbook, they say, welcome Shane to the LA Thieves. So really happy with Shane here. Absolute legend of the European scene. One of the best European players of all time, without a doubt, known back in the day for his, you know, great search and destroy. Like, you know, this guy's is a funny guy. Honestly, one of the funniest guys you'll meet. So I'm looking forward to seeing him in, in some content, right? But um, look, still, is this actually going to put their team in the right direction? That's a big question mark. As I said, of course, he was on London not too long ago. He says the following, joined LA Thieves as an assistant coach. So not an analyst, but an assistant coach. Of course, um, yeah, the job role doesn't necessarily indicate what he's going to be doing per se, but he's going to be joining alongside Jake at the last 10 months. I've had nothing about mob skills and adversity in my life beyond thankful and relishing this opportunity like no other. So really happy for Shane. Now, um, look, still, the question has to be raised. Is this actually going to do much for the success of their roster? Because we know that Jacob, in theory, they say is a good coach or whatever. Like, I think you could put a lot of coaches with this team and not necessarily bring out, um, you know, what this team was kind of supposed to do going into the season because the roles rise, you know, you've effectively got three ARs on this team, you could argue. The SMG line is pretty shocking, frankly, the last few weeks. So they've really got to think about that one. But, you know, maybe Shane's going to help them take a step in the right direction. As that, well, London said right here at the end of last season. That's when they pretty much released the entirety of their roster. And, you know, Shane was along with that as well. Now, this also was being discussed because a couple of seasons ago, well, this is last season, they had out, well, Novus as their analyst Los Angeles Thieves, who I'm pretty sure, like at least they say internally, did a great job helping them out, you know, preparing them for matches and taking scrim data and all this type of stuff that is honestly very valuable, right? And FaZe and Toronto, right? They have an awful lot of, well, staff behind the scenes. And Optic, of course, we saw this season, they added Rambo as an additional coach, and that seems to have helped them a rather a lot, right? There was a lot of talk last season about the fact that Sendar, like, um, he effectively had too much on his plate. Not only did he have to deal with the coaching in terms of preparing for matches, watching VODs, but also kind of doing the analyst work, coming up with ideas, coming up with strats. What is our rotation win percentage on this particular rotation in scrims? What is it for the best team in matches? Like, all this kind of information that, uh, you know, analysts couldn't provide. Easy Mac, for example, and of course, Toronto, they have a good staff over there. So do Minnesota Rocker, for example, like um, at Easy Mac on face, for example. They have these numbers, as Novus did for Los Angeles Thieves last time around. And this year, they really haven't had that right. And we think we've seen really with the double coach setup that Optic have that now like Rambo can take the more man management role and, um, and Sender can maybe focus more on kind of the specifics of the gameplay, which is um, it's a lot really that coaches have to think about with just one man in the tank. And Los Angeles Thieves said earlier this season in one of their kind of pre-shows or something, I'm pretty sure Modog said that they were looking into getting an analyst and they were working on it. This is like two months ago now. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So now Shane joins the team. I'm sure like he'll definitely do some work with them on maybe search and destroy strats and stuff like this but I'm not sure he's specifically going to be an analyst for the team. Then again, though, as I say, there's many different elements to being a coach for lineup. As we've seen, there's actually coming up with strats and ideas. There's, you know, analyst work in terms of, like, the pure numbers. There's actually managing the team and the player dynamics and all this type of stuff. Like, managing that as a single man is really tough to do. And, it, well, it makes sense that a lot of the teams have gone down the direction of having a couple of analysts or a couple of coaches, really. Main coach, assistant coach, whatever. That's what most of the top teams are doing right now. And, of course, it's been a talking point for Thieves, the fact that they haven't done that so far. Now, they do have another member of the team, and as Envoy says, already been said, but happy you're here to help. You know, it's been amazing so far. So maybe he's been there for a few days and helped the team out, they believe, quite significantly. But then again, though, look, bringing in an assistant coach, is that going to be the crucial factor? We've seen that, um, of course, a lot of people have been calling for roster changes. Do this, do that, do this. And last season, um, well, they made so many roster changes and none of them really particularly helped out. This year, they seem to be immune to making roster changes at all. And yet, uh, these are the kind of additions that they make. And still, it's not necessarily going to affect the bottom line of how well this team is performing. I think that's kind of the big question to most people, the Kenny is still severely underperforming, right? And whether Shane coming in can, you know, ha manage to, you know, miraculously fix that, because that's kind of the big talking point about Jacob, right? That he understands the game very well, but even Enable has said, right? And of course, some of the players have said that Enable doesn't really know what he's talking about, doesn't really watch our scrims, saying things for impressions is what Modog said just a couple of days ago. But Enable has said, look, Jacob isn't really the best guy at managing personalities. He's like, a, or getting the team hyped up. Well, let's say the team goes down 2-0, Jacob comes on stage to try and hype them up for the reverse sweep. He's not really the guy to do that. So, like, um, you know, that type of perspective, maybe Shane can add that a bit more. But, um, you know, still, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, Jacob and, and Shane as a coaching duo are going to get the best out of this team. Because at the end of the day, the coaches can only do so much. And when your SMG line is so questionable as this one is at the present time, I think at least, like, um, you know, Kenny here, he's had his moments, but really, like, uh, he seems to be prone to a 0.7 stinker right now. And um, it, if anything, it's actually Envoy that's played worse since having Kenny as his duo than when he had Draza. So, like, uh, that's kind of been the, the big theory, is that maybe Kenny is the guy that needs to step away. The problem is, of course, you don't really have that much time to do it. Right now, they're only on 80 points. Like, um, their stage their stage one was good. Their stage two was so shocking. Their zero in five record um, in the, well, the qualifiers, they haven't really put up too many points since then. They're one in two here. Their map count is only three and six. That means there's a very decent chance that Thieves don't even make it to winners this week, especially because, um, well, two of their matches this time are pretty hard. One's against
top take once against the Boston Breach. So they need to 100% beat Boston. And if they fail to beat Boston, they're probably going to losers, which um, would be absolutely shocking for them and probably means after the, well, after Major 3, they're going to have to make some sort of actual roster change. And maybe Shane will come in and say, look, I just don't think this is going to work. A lot of people have talked about this Thieves squad as being a bit of a friendship team, to be honest, right? The way these guys go back a little bit and the fact that Nature was saying, look, we're not going to get rid of Jacob because unless the players say that they want to get rid of him, but like, um, yeah, not necessarily going to do that if they get on with him, right? So all these questions are there. And maybe Shane comes in and says, look, Cap, Nade, this is not going to work with this current lineup. We've got to try something else. And maybe the guy they try out could be a guy like Pentagram. He tweets this out yesterday. He's definitely doing his best to try and get his name out there, right? The substitute player on this team. People have said, look, maybe this guy isn't really that good at this game or isn't really the best sub to bring in. But like, um, you know, maybe it's time to do something because this change bringing Shane and I think is good. It's good for him. It's potentially going to be good for the team as well. I think a positive move, but um, I don't really think it's going to all of a sudden make this team be winning events, right? So let's dive into the matches going on today. These are all the games this week. As I said, Los Angeles Thieves Breach, I think is an absolutely immense one because both of those games are one in two, or both of those teams are one in two. So the loser of that is probably not guaranteed, but it, well, it's very likely actually to start in the loser's bracket of the majors. That's a massively important one on the Saturday. And um, as you see, Optic play Thieves here on the Sunday. They play Subliners on the Saturday. But um, yeah, Friday's games are as follows. Those, of course, go on tonight. Paris versus Toronto. I can't imagine Paris are going to do much in this series. Surge versus Mutineers. Doesn't even say Seattle. Atelier is just straight up surge. But um, yeah, this is rather difficult to call, I think. Like, Mutineers could either just win this series or they could lose it. I don't know. I think this is like the most 50 50 series you're going to find today. Mutineers last week didn't look great. I think Surge have kind of been on the uptick a little bit, but uh, they're always prone to losing a series like this. But honestly, both of these teams need to win this series. I think I'm going to take Surge 3 2. I think they have a bit more ice than Mutineers, but it might go a very different story. Mutineers could just take over all the respawns, which is certainly possible. And then Rocker versus FaZe. This is certainly the most interesting series of the day to me. FaZe are always like dominant generally against teams that aren't optic, right? And they probably will show a similar story tonight. But I certainly feel like a game five could be on the card here because Rocket, they've been clutching up a lot in their respawns lately. FaZe's search and destroyers looked better as has their respawn in fairness, but against optic a different story. So don't know how to call this one. I'm hoping there's at least four maps. I think that phase three one is a realistic prediction, but also a three two is definitely on the cards, right? And Rocker in, in game fives are never one to be underestimated. So I'm going to take phase three one just about just because I think that this team in general, like a Minnesota Rocket, they've won a lot of hard points and close respawns lately, but a lot of those respawns have been very tight, and um, I think the phase will, will have enough to get over the line. But very much enjoyed to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, tell us your YouTube gods. This is a good video. I was like you should see it as well, and I've got the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you guys as always. Take care of yourselves. Thanks to Prize Picks as well, and I'll see you next time. Are, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Oh, 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 that giveaway. That giveaway right there. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, where is it? Kevin, is this US only again or what? Here we go, we're back. Wait, what? Here we go. Two I'm New Yorks? Bro, my, dude, wait, am, wait, I, am I on marginal?